Hey everyone, in this lesson, we are going to be looking at iterative design. Now, iterative design is a process that you will be doing numerous times throughout the uh, UI design workflow. Okay, and in our case, we are going to be implementing it during our wireframe phase in order to improve upon our design, uh, look for issues that may occur, look for additional things we can add, etc. So, First of all, what is iterative design? Well, basically this is the process of testing the interface, making changes, then repeating that process to refine the product, okay? The iterative, the iterative design process is a circular process that doesn't really have a strict endpoint. Rather, you keep repeating the process until you are happy with the results, okay? Now, it looks sort of like this. We first of all test our interface, we then gather issues and gather feedback, different improvements we might want to make. Then we go ahead, we refine the interface and we improve it. We make changes, we remove things that need to be removed. And then we test the interface again, identify issues, refine and improve and repeat. Okay. So like I said, this process, it does not have a strict endpoint. Rather, you keep repeating this process until you're happy with the final product. Okay. That might be five times, might be a hundred times, might be a thousand times. Uh, it really depends on how much uh, iteration you want to do for your product, how finely you want to adjust it to your user story, to your target demographic um, until you are happy. Now, how are we going to be doing this with our wireframe? Because our wireframe doesn't really work, okay? It's not really doing anything. There's no game to play. The buttons don't do anything. The joystick doesn't do anything. Well, for this, we are going to simulate a user interacting with our interface, okay? We're going to sort of play pretend here and pretend we are a user who wants to do things in our game and interact with our UI. Um, so this is going to allow us to identify issues, identify expected interactions and other potential improvements that we can make, okay? Then what we're going to do is like the process before said, we are then going to implement these changes and repeat the process, okay, until we are happy with our wireframe. Now, there's only so much iteration we can do with a wireframe, of course, because we aren't actually having a game that we're playing with or having UI that we can interact with, but there is still some iterative design that we can do during the wireframe phase, okay? So let's jump over to our wireframe now and get started. So here we are inside of our wireframe and let's have a look at our UI here and pretend we are a user playing the game. Okay, so we have our player here, we have an enemy here, we probably want to move towards them so we can click and drag on the joystick here in the direction that we want to move. We can then click and drag on the screen in order to move that around. And now what we are doing is when we're up to our enemy, they might attack us, so we'll click on the block button. We then want to go ahead and attack them, okay? Now, in game design and in UI design as a whole, it's a good idea that you keep in mind what is going to be the most important information on the screen. And the most important information is generally what you want to be most clear to the player. So when you have a look at our screen at a quick glance, one of the first things you notice is probably gonna be the joystick because that stands out as one of the larger elements on our screen here. And it is, okay? This is probably gonna be the, the most um, you interact with a UI element, okay, this and dragging the screen around, okay, as pretty much everything that you need to do in this game to accomplish anything is going to be done by moving and looking around. Now, when it comes to these four buttons here, at a quick glance, it's almost impossible to tell which one is the most important, okay, because at a, at a quick glance, they all look equally important, okay, um, so as a user looking at this and interacting with it, they probably think that all of these buttons are of equal importance, whereas in reality, they aren't, okay? Um, in a game like an action RPG, the most important button is probably gonna be the attack button, okay? So this is what the player needs to be able to identify as the most important button on the UI. And that can be the first step of our iterative design process, okay? We're looking at this, we're playing the game, um, but the player, you know, they might have a trouble with clicking on the attack button as it's the same size as everything else and they might accidentally click on block, they might accidentally click on jump. Um, so what we need to do is we need to make this attack button more important, okay? So we can end the playtest there, we can go back to our design and iterate upon it. So. What I'm gonna do is I am gonna make this attack button be the biggest out of these four here, okay? To give the most importance and the most attention to it. So what I'm gonna do is just increase it in size here um, so that it is very close to the same size as our joystick here. Um, and at the same time, we can also then decrease the size of these other buttons since they don't really need to be this large. So we can bring those all down in size here. 
and then we can just have them sort of circulate the uh, attack button like so, okay? And there we go. So now at a quick glance, you see, okay, the attack button here, that's the most important. And then we have all of these sort of accessory abilities or accessory actions to the attack, okay? Because this is an action RPG. In order for the player to progress and win the game, that is generally done by attacking things, okay? So the attack button is going to be the most important button out of these four. So that can be done by making it larger. And also later on, once we get to the actual implementation phase where we start actually having colors, um, Making this a color that stands out is probably also going to be important um, as that will also draw the player's attention to it more. So that is the first phase of our iterative design process done and we've already made a pretty major improvement to improve the look of our UI. Now something else, okay, let's again, once again, go again and simulate our game. So we'll move the player around, we'll approach the enemy, We'll easily be able to click on the attack button now that it's larger than everything else. We'll block. Uh, we might even cast a special or jump to get out of the way. We'll then attack them again. The enemy then attacks us and we get damaged. Now, that is some information that we don't really have access to because typically in your game, you're going to have a UI element that represents your health bar or represents how much ability power or charge you have, okay? And that's important because that is information the player needs to know as that is going to influence their decisions going forward, okay? If the player is low in health, they're probably not going to chase after an enemy. Whereas if they are in full health, they're probably going to be more uh, confident in doing so. So in our situation here, we need to figure out what information we want to provide to the player, okay? That's important. We don't need to provide the player with how fast they are moving or what direction they are moving in. There's a lot of information we could show the player, but a lot of it is also pretty unnecessary, okay? So in our case, I think a health bar would be important as that is something that the player would generally like to know. Okay, so what we are going to do here is we are going to go ahead and find a UI element. So I'm going to go down actually to Bootstrap as this Bootstrap dropdown typically has a bunch of really good UI elements here. And we are going to basically find a little scroll bar or a progress bar. Okay, so down here we have a progress bar for red. So we're going to drag that in. Now, by default, it is very large. So we probably want to then shrink this in size by quite a bit. There we go, bring that down. Also the other element, which it comes with, it has a child element. We can click on that and bring that down in size as well. Okay, we can then shrink this a bit more here, move it up there, maybe increase the fill a bit. Okay, and then we can add in some text because we also want to probably tell the player how much health they have. So we can scroll to the top, click and drag on the text shape. We can then drag that over our other element here, make it about the same size. Um, you can see it has sort of resized a bit weird, but we can of course fix that by just adjusting it. Okay, clicking on that, dragging that up. Yeah, it can, it can get a bit annoying trying to um, manage all these overlapping elements, but there we go. Now we can double click on the text element to, re, uh, to basically change the text. And here I'm just gonna say maybe, uh, let's go 80 out of 100, okay? Just to show our health. Make it bold by going Control B or clicking on the bold icon here. And we can then probably change the color to be white so it stands out a bit. And there we go. So that is our UI. We've made some iterative improvements upon it by just basically simply simulating a test. Um, now, between now and the next lesson, I want you to go ahead and do the iterative process one more time and figure out something else that you might want to add, change, remove, or move around with your UI. Now, if this is not the sort of UI you're working with, then of course, iterate upon it on your own. If you're making a puzzle game, if you're making a platformer, do that. Um, but yeah, between now and the next lesson, I want you to figure out a different improvement or refine a certain aspect of the UI, and then we can continue on with our design process. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all then in the next lesson. Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we are gonna finish off our iterative design process by adding in our final improvement, okay? But if this was a real case scenario where you're actually developing a UI, um, you'd probably iterate upon the design many, many times. You'd probably show people it, compare it to your research, um, get, uh, get advice from your user story focused users, your target demographic in order to see what they think of it. Um, and yeah, you do a lot more sort of background research and development on the UI, but 
you know, we're sort of streamlining through the process right here. So we're just going to go nice and easy on it. So I hope that you went ahead and done the iterative design process on your wireframe once more to figure out an additional thing to add or remove or modify. Um, so let's go ahead and do it right now for our game. So like before, we can move around with a joystick. We can, um, we can block, we can do our special ability, we can jump, we can attack with the attack button right here. Okay, so we'll swing at our enemy. They might then swing back at us. Our health will then be reduced over here on this screen. Uh, we can open up our inventory to change our items or equip new things. We can pause the game if we want to have a break um, or save. But what happens if we keep attacking the enemy? Um, that is also information that we need to know, such as the enemy's health. Okay, because typically in an RPG game like this, uh, the enemy will have their own health bar on screen. Now, what we need to do for that is we need to basically add in another health bar similar to the one here. Although we don't want it to be the same size, we don't want it to be the same layout, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and I'm going to find another uh, scroll bar, or not a scroll bar, a progress bar like we had before. I'm going to drag that in. We are then going to resize it. So I'm just going to bring this down here. Resize it so it's a lot smaller than what we have right now. Okay. Then going to shrink it down vertically as well to be nice and small here. Something like that, I reckon. Um, and then we're just going to move it above the enemy's head. We can also then use the arrow keys to have a much more finer control over its placement. Um, and if you want to have a finer control over its size, we can go over to the uh, arrange window here on the right hand side. And where it says size, we can then click on these little things here to adjust the size. Okay, so you can see I'm having a lot finer control over how big this UI element is. Okay, so there we go. Um, so we can then adjust this position just above the enemy's head, like so. Now, as general advice in UI design and game design, um, to have the enemy's health bar be smaller than the player's, the reason why is because uh, that information is could be crowded if there are multiple enemies on screen. You probably don't want dozens of these large-scale health bars all over the screen. And second of all, because the you want to be able to differentiate the two. Okay, the one that's more important to the player would generally be their own health bar, as that being the larger element, that is going to be where their eyes are going to dart to first, and that's also what the player is going to see a lot easier on screen if there's a lot of action going on. Whereas with the enemy health bar, this is probably going to only appear briefly on screen, and it's going to act as just an indicator for how far the enemy is to be defeated, okay? So having that as a much smaller element is going to be important, um, as you don't want these large health bars popping up all over the place. So from here, you can, of course, go ahead with the iterative design process once more, twice more, three times more. Um, but I think for now, we're pretty happy with what we have right here on our wireframe. And I think it is quite an improvement of what we had originally, okay? If you compare it to what we had before, all these four buttons were the exact same size and it wasn't clear which was the most important or most well used. Whereas now, we know that the attack button is probably gonna be the one that is used the most with all these sort of accessory abilities on the outside, okay? And if you compare this to much of the research, you'll see that that is also the case, okay? Many games have their most important buttons or most commonly used, most well used buttons be the larger ones, okay? As that is typically what the player is gonna click on most. And you probably, on a touch screen like this, you don't want the player misclicking accidentally, okay? So having the buttons that the players are gonna use most often be the largest ones is gonna be a good idea. Um, and this can be the case for not just game design and game UIs, but for any sort of UIs out there, okay? If you're creating an app um, for anything really, having the most important information be largest, having the most important interactions be the largest and most clear to the user is always going to be an important step in designing good UI. So yeah, that is a look at creating a wireframe and iterating upon it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you all then in the next lesson.